Um, we will talk today about um, a very common condition, which is dry eye. Probably the most uh, complaint that uh, eye doctors hear from their patients is, doctor, I have eye, uh, dry eyes, or um, doctor, my contact lenses make my eyes feel dry. Uh, contact lenses um, are associated with dryness, and this is why we um, are going to discuss the um, uh, contact lens induced dry eye. Now, um, <coughs> statistics identify that the preference rate, uh, rates of um, dry eye range from 7% to 33%, depending on which population they, they did the studies on. Risk factors uh, include um, uh, advanced age. Normally, people um, above the age of 50 will suffer more of dry eyes. Uh, females, um, due to hormon hormonal changes, will suffer also more of dryness. Uh, smoking, uh, people who smoke or sit in um, uh, polluted environments, uh, extreme heat or cold weather, uh, humidity, um, videos or computer terminals, refractive surgery and contact lens wear, and certain medication. Obviously, all these are risk factors which um, um, increase the symptoms of um, dry eye. Uh, it is very important, okay, it is very important to um, um, take um, a very um, detailed um, history and uh, note uh, the symptoms that the patient is uh, complaining of. Um, a group of um, experts um, uh, agreed that this is the definition of dry eye. So they said it's a multifactorial disease of the tears and ocular uh, surface and it has the symptoms of discomfort and visual disturbance. So it does affect the vision and it is associated with um, an increased osmolarity of the chair film and inflammation of the ocular surface. So what happens is that you, uh, if you see in this picture, you have the normal tears and the um, hyperosmolar levels in the chair film. In the case of dryness, you will have um, a more concentrated chair film with uh, reduced um, amounts of um, tears. Okay, now this is um, basically what happens. This is the, inf uh, this is the inflammatory cascade. Um, whenever there is um, um, any irritation or um, uh, environmental uh, medications, contact lens surgery, any, any, cause, any cause that uh, will cause irritation to the eye, this will result in an inflammation, and the inflammation will, will result in tear deficiency, and this will result in, in irritation again. So this is called the um, inflammatory cascade that happens in dry eye. And this will all lead to um, uh, symptoms of ocular surface disease. Okay, so what's, what are the symptoms of dry eyes? What's what do, norm, what do patients normally complain of when they have dry eyes? Foreign body sensation. Foreign body sensation. They feel as though Burning. there is sand in their eyes. Okay. Burning. Tearing. Burning. Itching. Burning. Sorry. Burning. Ah, bl uh, blurred vision. Burning, and, uh, burning, burning sensation in, in severe dry eyes. Okay, so we have watery eyes. Um, we have a uh, fe feeling that there's sand in the eyes, eyes that itch and burn, vision that becomes blurred, especially after watching TV or using a computer, and red um, or irritated eyes that produce a mucus discharge. So these are the, the, the symptoms that we, uh, we have to um, deal with. So people will be really bothered by, by this feeling, and um, this is why they come in to see us. Okay, now the tear layers, just very briefly, um, the, 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 the tear layer consists of three uh, layers. The lipid layer is the outermost layer that is exposed to the atmosphere, 
and the aqueous layer, the, as you see, comprises 90% of the tear film. And the mucus layer is the, is the layer that is directly covering the uh, corneal epithelium. So here we have, um, so here we have the, the, um, the corneal epithelium, and this is the mucus layer that is covering the cornea. And here we have the aqueous layer, and this is the lipid layer. Now, this is the lacrimal um, apparatus. Um, uh, it consists of the lacrimal gland, where, which produces the aqueous part of the tear film that passes through the ducts onto the ocular surface. Then we have the meibomian glands, which, are, which line the upper and lower eyelids. We have about two, uh, 50 meibomian glands on the upper eyelid and, and 25 on the lower eyelid. These glands produce the oily part of the tear film, which is the lipid. And then we have the goblet cells on the conjunctiva that produce the mucus. So we have three uh, different layers, and each layer is produced by a different part of the um, lacrimal apparatus. Now, there is a certain constituency of, for the tear film that um, uh, causes the stability of the tear film. So constantly, um, tears are produced, lubricating tears are produced in a with a certain amount of water, oil, mucus, um, proteins. Um, um, in, uh, so it's a certain consist constituency that uh, keeps the tears stable. Now the, the, um, the eyelid, the upper eyelid, functions as um, a wiper. So what it does, it spreads, it spreads the tear film over the surface of the eye, okay? Now, between blinks, what happens between blinks is that as you open your eye, the tear, the tear film will thin and break up or fracture, okay? So little areas on the cornea will be exposed to the atmosphere and this will actually trigger the blinking action again. So it's very important when patients come in that we examine them and we make sure that they are blinking enough, okay? Do you know uh, how many times a normal person would blink in a minute? 15, 15. Uh, yeah, it's between 13 to 17. And uh, people who uh, have reduced blinking rates due to uh, computer uh, use, how many times do they blink? Yeah, which is, which is much less. And that's why they suffer, they suffer from dry eyes, because their tears will evaporate uh, more quickly. Okay, now each, we said we have three different types of layers. Now each layer um, um, serves to, to um, do a different uh, thing on the, uh, on the eye. Now the lipid layer, which is the oil, it, co it covers the water in the tears, okay? So it prevents the water from being evaporated. So basically, if we don't have enough oil on the surface of the eye, then the tears will um, evaporate, okay? Okay, now these, the, the, lip, the oils are secreted by the meibomian glands, and um, uh, these also uh, serve to lubricate the, li the lids after blinking. Now the mucin layer is the one that is covering the cornea, so that serves to, to turn the surface into a hydrophilic surface, and it's also responsible for the tear film stability. The aqueous layer, which is the, the water part, okay, it provides the oxygen to the epithelium, and it contains the um, lactoferrin and lysozyme, <coughs> which uh, pre prevents infection. And it, um, it um, forms a smooth optic surface and cleans the cellular debris and dust. Okay? So if we think of the tears, they have lipids, mucus, and water. Okay? And these are all secreted from different parts in different amounts. Okay? And this is how the tear film is formed. Now, when we say dry eye, it's not always that there isn't enough water um, in the tears, okay? It, there could be a different um, reason for dryness, okay? If we think of two things, we think of quality and quantity, okay? So we always have to decide, are the tears of poor quality or are they um, minimal, okay? Is the eye producing enough tears? It might be producing enough tears, but the quality is poor, and it might be producing a lot of tear, um, a lot of tea, um, um, little tears, but with high quality. 
Now we have two types of tears. The lubricating tears are, are the good tears that we that we that we need that are being produced constantly. And then we have the reflex tears. The reflex tears are, are the emergency response of the eye when you get something in your eye and then your eye is, is watering. Now these tears are called reflex tears and they, they constitute they constitute 90%, um, 98% of water. So these tears are not actually lubricating tears. These are not the tears that, that are useful for us. Now blinking, blinking is, is really, really important, okay? And it, um, it is what maintains the, 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 the tear film and forms the tear film on the surface of the eye. Now the lack of blinking does not appear immediately. Normally it appears at the end of the day because it is cumulative. Okay, so by the end of the day, uh, the exposure of the cornea to the atmosphere and the dryness will cause the symptoms. So normally people will complain at the end of the day rather at the, than at the beginning of the day. Now these are the seven functions of the tear film, which are all um, very, very important basically to keep um, our eyes alive, okay? And um, uh, this is why um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ Because without this, uh, these uh, benefits of the tear film, then the eye would literally uh, be damaged. Okay, now here, um, <coughs> we, uh, as we said earlier, we have, um, we have either evaporative eye, um, dry eye or tear deficient dry eye, okay? Is, is the reason for the dryness is that the lacrimal gland is not producing enough water or is it that the tears are being evaporated? And this, we as practitioners, we have to decide, okay? Now, the, the tear film instability can be caused either by environmental factors or by biological factors. What are the causes of evaporative dry eye? Uh, um, you have in environmental, such as if you, if you sit in a room with a, a, an AC or a heater, or you have lots of dust um, uh, in the atmosphere. Eyelid inflammation, which is blepharitis and um, uh, myobium gland dysfunction, and lid surface anomalies. Now, all these conditions will cause the tears to evaporate very fast. Um, Dr. Um, Ronald Kerb um, uh, did a lecture, which I was uh, quite surprised when I, when I uh, read it on the net. And what it said was that he um, thinks that 80% of the people who suffer from dry eyes are misdiagnosed. He thinks that 80% of the people actually have my uh, myobomian gland dysfunction and the reason the prime reason for dryness is that the eye is not producing enough oil and that the evaporative um, uh, effect is the main reason for dryness and uh, he invented this um, 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 revolutionary um, device which is called uh, lippy flow okay and basically it, it uses pressure and heat to um, um, excrete all the oils from the, the glands. And this is how he is treating uh, dry eyes. Now, tear deficient dry eye um, uh, has uh, many reasons as well. One of, it, one of them is the Sjogren syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease that attacks the lacrimal glands or a non children syndrome where aging and vitamin A deficiency, thyroid disease, all these conditions um, will, will uh, affect the amount of um, tears that are being produced. And also, uh, as Dr. Badru said, the medically induced antihistamines and medication also will, will affect the amount of tears that are being produced. Now, what is our responsibility when we, when, we have, when we are checking patients who suffer from dry eyes, whether they wear contact lenses or they don't? Now, the, our, our responsibility is to carry out an investigation to find out what is the reason for the dry um, mucus strands and uh, deposits. Okay, now, corneal staining. Okay, um, what, what do you think this staining is due to? Different 
This this thing it could be um, uh, uh, due to um, it's complicated uh, superficial uh, polio staining due to dryness. So if a patient is wearing contact lens uh, with a high water content and the lens uh, becomes very dehydrated, then it causes and then you remove the lens and check the cornea with fluorescein, you are likely to find this punctate stain. This is one reason. Another reason would be the incomplete blinking. Some people don't blink completely. They, they just blink um, partially. So the bottom part of the cornea is exposed to the air, and this is what causes this staining. My bulbing gland dysfunction is, for us, we have to, to check the, the glands at the edge of the eyelids, okay? Uh, in many, many cases, you will find that these glands are clogged, okay? So the oil is not actually um, uh, passing out into the tear film. So what we have to do is we have to um, try to unclog these um, glands. I will show you... Um, I will show you just this video. It's very a very good video, but you won't play because probably you didn't put the video on the Flash. Did you put the video on the flash? Yes, I did. Oh, okay, yeah. you should play that. Ah, uh, it doesn't. Ah, oh, okay. It's a. It was a. It was a video just to show how um, you can actually um, squeeze, use uh, hot compressors, and squeeze at the bottom eyelids and get all the the oil out of the uh, the glands. This is also one for it. Huh? Okay, this is talking about the, the tear break of time. Okay, so, um, so we will check for the cornea staining and we will uh, examine the myvomian glands. This is what we do with the slit lamp. Now, to test for the tear function, we can uh, do these tests also in, the, in our practice. The first one is tear break of time and the Shermer test, which I'm sure you have uh, used. Okay, to do the tear break of time, we use fluorescein and the slit lamp or cobalt blue light with a yellow rattan filter. And we just watch the, um, with the fluorescein, okay, between blinks. As soon as these black islands here appear, this shows when the tear film is actually rupturing or breaking. Anything less than five seconds would indicate severe dry eye. A normal tear breakup time should be more than 10 seconds. Okay, so this is a video. <laughs>
This is a city of dry iron. normal GFM, but if it starts to break up less than 10 seconds or 5 seconds, then it's of poor quality. Okay? Now, the Schermer test uh, tests for quantity, okay? So if we can carry out these two tests, then we will we will know exactly if whether the patient has um, evaporative uh, dry eye or um, tear deficiency. Uh, the Schermer test, uh, basically you use these Schermer strips and then you leave it in for five minutes and then you will check how, the, how much of the strip is, um, is wet. If it's 15 millimeters, it's normal. If it's 10, it's possibly dry. And if it's less than five, it's a dry eye. Um, they, they stopped using Shermer tests in many, many uh, clinics and hospitals, except to test for very, very severe dryness, okay? Because it is quite invasive. And when you put the Shermer test, you will get the Shermer strip, you're going to get reflex tearing. So it's not very accurate, but it does uh, um, indicate severe dry eye. Okay, uh, this is what we said about the tear in this Okay, this is this is what we were talking about. The lippy, the same concept as the lippy flow uh, device, is that they they. gel form or ointment form. Ointment form is recommended to be used overnight so that uh, because it will uh, blur, blur the vision. Um, the lubricant that is used in most uh, eye drops on the market at the moment is sodium hyaluronate. Sodium hyaluronate uh, actually is, is um, um, in the body and they, um, um, the sodium hyaluronate easily spreads over the ocular surface and it, it is long-lasting and effective. 
and that's why um, they, they, they use it because it's water retentive and it reduces the healing time of the corneal epithelium. So if you see all the eye drops on the market, you will find uh, that the um, lubricant that is in them is sodium hyaluronate. Now, artificial tears are different. Um, um, some of them are cellulose-based, some of them are glycerin-based, and some of them are oil-based, depending on the cause of the dryness. So the oil-based are to replace the lipid layer. So if you find that a person has blepharitis or myobomine gland dysfunction, it's best that he uses an oil-based eye drop, such as Sustain Balance or Refresh. Um, if you find that the, that the person has a problem with the, with the uh, mucus layer, then they can use a glycerin-based drop, such as Blink from Allegan or, or Refresh. And if you find that they have um, too little um, uh, water in their tears, then you can use a cellulase-based drop, such as um, refreshed tears, okay? So it's not, they, they don't all function the same. It, it, you have to choose the right eye drops depending on the cause. Now, how do we relieve the symptoms of dry eyes? We have to recommend the person to increase blinking, to rest the eyes and look away from the computer uh, or the television, protect the eyes from sunny or windy environments with sunglasses, avoid prolonged exposure to smoke or air conditioning, and drink at least six to eight glasses of water per day, wear contact lenses that block moisture, the new generation lenses, and in more severe cases, they are treated with steroid, steroids and other medication. Um, now, with contact lenses, what's, what, what can we do? Approximately 50% of people who wear contact lenses will suffer from uh, contact lens-induced dry eyes. So these are the things that we can do with our contact lens patients. We can cha change the care system. So if they are using a multi-purpose solution with preservatives, we can um, recommend a peroxide system, which does not have preservatives. This will help. We can eliminate care, care, care systems. So if a person is using a monthly um, replacement contact lens, we can switch them to a daily, where they don't need to use um, solutions. Replacement frequency, if they change their lenses more often, that will help. Uh, we can change the lens design or the material. There are lots of materials on the market now and lots of um, uh, care products that actually have lubricants incorporated in them. Uh, that will help. Um, tear supplementation, okay, we can use um, uh, the um, lubricants to help uh, while the person is wearing the lenses. Uh, dietary supplementation such as um, omega-3, as we said now, and to, change, to, to change the environment they, they, they work in, that will help. Okay, so uh, if you think about it, uh, how many patients a day do you see who are over 50? Many, right? How many people use a computer? Lot. How many people work in an office with an AC? Everybody. How many have had LASIK surgery? Many. How many have diabetes? How many use medications? How many wear contact lenses? And how many regular travelers? And how many people have allergies? Now, these, all these people we see in our, in our clinic on a daily basis. All these people are at risk of having a dry eye, if not uh, uh, regularly, but at a certain point in their life. So these people come in with serious symptoms, okay, and serious complaints, and it's our duty to help them to relieve the symptoms. So it's very important for us to have a very accurate history and to um, take consideration of their symptoms and their complaints. Um, in order to help them to alleviate these symptoms. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.